Now, the theme of this lecture is gastrointestinal regenerative restoration, which may be the most concerning topic for the human being. Why will the gastrointestine be discussed first in my lecture? Let's do an analysis. There are two extremely important organs in our human body. One is the lung, while the other is the gastrointestine. The gastrointestine is everyone's body in age with time. The aging of gastrointestine organs is chronic suicide of a human life. We examine the gastrointestine of young people of around 25 years of age. Two-thirds of their gastrointestines are aged, and only one-third of their gastrointestines are in a young state. You see how terrible? As we know, natural substances such as oxygen and food absorbed through the lungs and digested by the digestive tract respectively can provide energy for our body, can then be used to maintain our lives. So the first lecture focuses on the special topic of the gastrointestines. The gastrointestines has a maximum length of about 7 meters. First, let's establish a basic understanding of the gastrointestines. I know you are more concerned about the damages due to gastrointestine aging, but first we must understand the internal structure of the gastrointestines. We already discussed how long it is. Now let's discuss the structure of the gastric wall. There is the mucosal layer, submucosal layer, muscularis layer, and serosal layer from the inside to the outside of the gastric wall. The gastric mucosa, and it looks like packed stones. This is an electron microscope picture. There is a little mucus on the surface of the gastric mucosa. After drinking alcohol, the stomach will secrete mucus, which causes gastric injury. Eating chili and drinking cold water causes some damage, as drinking alcohol does. The human body has the potential to repair itself very quickly by regenerating new gastric epithelial cells. However, when the gastrointestine is aged, this function will be reduced or non-existent. What does the intestinal mucosa look like? From the inside to the outside of the intestinal walls, there's the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis, and the serosa. How about the intestinal glands? They are composed of absorptive cells, goblet cells, paneth cells, and endocrine cells, with the function of secreting small intestinal fluids and mucus, etc. Intestinal villi looks like sheep wool protruding from the intestinal mucosa surface towards intestinal cavities. Well, what damages can be caused by GI aging? The first is premature aging. GI aging begins 20 years earlier than the aging of other organs, so everyone can be a victim. GI aging can result in the systematic aging of our bodies. For example, a white-collar worker at the age of 30 seems to be in his prime, but his GI may already be worse than that of an elder woman. His GI is already like that of an elder woman. Later, I will give you cases where I'm sure you will be astonished. GI aging can also lead to other systemic diseases. The next damage is metabolic disorder. Many of you here in the room may have been suffering from metabolic disorders. This judgment is reasonable because our diet is not scientific. Our GIs are not young. So, our metabolism may be distributed and this bad cycle would continue. The diseases such as hyperlemia, high cholesterol, hyperglycemia, fatty livers, and etc. can also be caused by GI dysfunction because the GI cannot digest and discharge the inappropriate things you eat through the normal metabolic process. When you are young, the GI can absorb food ingredients selectively, but when you are old, this function of your GI would disappear. That is to say, your GI cannot handle the absorption effectively, so a lot of things will accumulate in your body. Therefore, hyperlimedia, high blood sugar, and high blood pressure will occur. Here I tell you, they won't be high anymore. After all, they are not difficult to treat. Another condition is the endocrine disorders. The GI is the largest endocrine organ of the human body. Do not mistake any secretion glands as the largest endocrine organ. Neither of them is the largest secretion gland because the GI is the real one. GI malaise affects all body organs, even your brain. For instance, if your stomach is aching, even if you want to cheer up, it is impossible. The reason is that the aching disturbs your hormone production and further influences your normal regulation of hormones. Nearly half of the people with hypertension are suffering from enterogenous hypertension. The high blood pressure in many middle-aged people is not true cardiovascular hypertension, but is caused by the cell aging of GI mucosa, which results in the reduction of inhibins both in the GI and the brain. We have made progress in research on this and found that after regenerative restoration of GI mucosa, the blood pressure can decrease. Many of our club members, guests, and volunteers are patients with enterogenous hypertension. After treatment, their blood pressure returns to their normal level, and they even have no need to take hypertensors. Diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is not directly caused by insulin, but by the endocrine system. For example, in 2001, I was diagnosed with diabetes with hyperglycemia by the 305 hospital and the 301 hospital. 
the fasting blood glucose level was 17, while the postprandial blood glucose was 24. I was shocked at that. Director Lee urged me to seek treatment for my disease since it was quite serious, but now it is not. My diabetes was caused by endocrine disorders, not by the pancreas. My pancreas is not damaged. Therefore, friends, when you suffer diabetes, do not take insulin blindly. Find ways to adjust and regulate your body. After all, insulin has the side effect of addiction. Intractable insomnia is definitely caused by gastrointestinal disorders. Why? The GI has a dependent nerve system to control its activities, which is contrary to the nervous control in the brain. When nerves in the brain are in the rest state, the GI will begin to work, and vice versa. But when GI disorders occur, it be in the active state where nerves in the brain are also in an active state, so things are messed up. When the gastrointestine is empty, we feel uncomfortable, but our nerves can do nothing about it. Because the GI has an independent nervous system. In the future, we will touch on the nervous system again. Later on, we will continue to discuss the diseases of the GI itself. Just now, we talked about the damages caused by GI aging. What does the aged GI look like? You may have a general impression of it if you are not a professional in this field. Which is thicker, the young GI or the old one? Well, the aged GI wall is thin and the gastric glands are less dense and empty, while the restored GI wall is thick and glands are more dense and full. Gastric glands can produce not only digestive fluids, but also endocrine hormones. What does duodenum aging look like? It is similar to that of GI aging. The aged duodenum wall is thin and has very little villi, while a restored young intestinal wall is thick and has dense villi. Let's see the regenerative restoration of the small intestine. You will be surprised by our outcomes. So, you should take care of your small intestines. What does the aging small intestine look like? First, let's take a look at the aged small intestine wall. The wall is muscle, so you can see that paralysis part and it is so thin like a tiny crack. Look at the intestinal glands. There are only a few villi circles. Now let's take a look at what the restored young intestine looks like. The muscle is so thick and there are many vigorous intestinal glands. So just imagine if the small intestines is regeneratively restored, no matter what kind of food we take in, its function can be vigorous and it will be able to keep our GI in a healthy state. If not, no matter how much nutritional food we eat, our body would stay in the 1960s. It's true, we must pay attention to it. Now we look at the large intestines, which is the same as the small intestines. Firstly, this is lymph. The large intestines functions as a bacterial treatment plant in the human body. If it is damaged, who can take its place to protect our body? That is the lymph. You can clearly see the great difference beforehand and after restoration. The wall is thin and there are less glands and lymphs in aged large intestines. In contrast, in the restored one, the wall is much thicker and there are more glands and lymphs. All things are younger. This is a real successful case treated by regenerative restoration science and technology. After seeing the historical features of GI, let's take a look at visual stuff. Now what we are looking at are the pictures of the natural aged and the restored intestinal villi respectively. The villi of the aged are scarce and short, while that of the restored are dense and long. Huge difference. Intestinal mucosa villus has the function of absorption. The villi density in a young state is more than 4 million, while that in an aged state is less than 1.5 million. If this cannot also help you form a concrete concept, let's do a calculation. What are the total area of aged intestinal villi? The length of each villus is 0.6 to 1.6 millimeters, so that the total area of the aged intestinal villi is less than 50 square meters. That is to say, what we eat is digested in a saved-like area of 50 square meters. Then what is the total area of the restored villus? It is more than 200 square meters, in which we eat is digested. On a surface area of more than 200 square meters, what we eat is digested. So we can say that once GI problems are resolved, the entire nutrition absorption will be smooth. For example, eating one egg can be 100% absorbed by the restored intestines, while only 25% absorbed by the aged intestines. So, the GI is the most important organ whose aging would severely impair the absorption of nut nutrients in our human body. Next, let's talk about the procedure to implement regenerative restoration and rejuvenation of gastrointestinal organs. Pay attention, guests. After my lecture, if you are interested in this topic, you can also contact us to know more details about it. I say, today's meeting is very special and is worth remembering. We will give special consideration to the attendees present. We intend to improve the gastrointestinal function. The procedure is as follows, obtaining a regenerative substance, the protecting, activating, and cultivating, regenerative restoration in situ of the gastrointestines, rejuvenation in situ of the gastrointestines, 
carrying out of the regenerative restoration and rejuvenation plan individually. Now, let's talk about the procedure step by step. The procedure for obtaining regenerative substances is very simple. How are the regenerative nutrients obtained? They originate from testing on the model of cloning tissue organs from gastric body cells, from an animal model. The cells from an animal stomach were taken out to be cultured directly. Remember, only stomach tissue cells were used rather than others because others such as stem cells are meaningless here. These cells must be tissue cells, which are transformed into stem cells. Then they can be clone new tissues, just like mucosa of human beings. In this way, we get the regenerative substances. The GI capsule, though looks like ordinary medication, you see, this is the stomach model. From the intestinal model, we need to take out intestinal cells and transform them into stem cells, so as to regenerate tissues and then to clone tissue organs. To obtain regenerative substances in this way is very easy, which is different from drug research. What we do is not to attack something using toxic substances. Our products are conceptually different from medication. To eat the regenerative substances is pretty much like eating steamed bread, fried dough sticks, and the like. This is new alimentology and brand new nutrients are created by regenerative restoration science. Currently, there are three kinds of gastrointestinal regenerative substances formulae. One is a market product, which has been approved since 2001. But we didn't do large-scope marketing because we want to further our research rather than obtain benefits. Otherwise, we may have learned a lot. This kind of product is research-oriented and is for conventional use. The second is specific for individual members of our club. Based on their health data, we prepared a specific formula for different individuals. The third is specifically prepared gastrointestinal nutrients targeting specific diseases, such as that for terminal cancer patients. In these cases, the GI is generally severely damaged. In order to extend patients' lives, we have to find our unique skill. The specifically prepared GI capsule is such a product which can quickly restore the GI. After all, to save one's life is the most urgent thing to do in such cases. Above is the information about the products. Next to talk about how to protect and activate the GI, let's see this model. It is of an oil solution with microwax crystals suspended inside. They can adhere to the surface of GI directly rather than float in the cavity. To protect and culture the GI cells, See, after taking the capsules, the shell is still there, but the contents has released and adhered to the surface of GI immediately. That is to say, no matter what you eat, such as pepper, alcohol, or cold water, as long as you have taken the GI capsule, your gastric mucosa can be protected from injuries. So, for the regenerative restoration of GI, we have to create such an environment. The capsule is effective four to six hours after taking it. After taking it, it can pass through the GI tract slowly. As long as you take it every four to six hours, your GI will always be under protection. GI diseases would disappear with a regenerative restoration of the GI. Let me give you another example. What does drinking alcohol do to the GI? What damages will alcohol do to GI mucosa? This is the picture of the GI after drinking 125 grams of white spirit. The GI mucosa looks like this when you feel uncomfortable after drinking. Usually, the gastric mucosa membrane can self-repair quickly. Within three days, it can restore to its normal state. But with the help of GI capsule, you don't have to suffer from this discomfort. After taking the capsule, the content of it can cover the mucosal membrane to avoid damages. See? The yellow content is covering the mucosal surface. So, when we suffer from motion sickness, we feel nausea, which means that our gastric mucosa has been damaged by gastric acid. At this time, it has been too late to swallow the capsule because it cannot be digested immediately, so you'd better chew the capsule. In this way, the capsule can immediately relieve the symptoms of motion sickness and protect your mucosal membrane. The result is very fast and obvious. So, do remember to take capsules before drinking alcohol. China-Japan Friendship Hospital has conducted a study on 30 subjects drinking 125 grams of white spirit. The GI mucosa was protected in the ones who had taken a capsule before drinking, while gastrointestinal mucosa is the subjects who have not taken capsules appeared to be acutely eroded, damaged, and even bleeding. For the patients who take the medication long term, the GI capsule is also effective to protect the GI. Patients with rheumatoid arthritis take anti-rheumatoids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and anglical chemical drugs long term. 
which will harm their gastrointestinal tract. One comparative study has shown that there was no GI damage in the GI capsules taken group, while the GI was hurt in the group without intake of the GI capsules. Another topic that you may be anxious about, stomach cramps caused by nervousness under work stress, can also do harm to the gastric mucosa. Under work stress, oxygen consumption in the brain will increase. Gastrointestinal blood flow will reduce. The mucosal ischemia will occur. All of these are inflammatory symptoms do harm to the gastric mucosa. But if you have taken the capsule, the situation will be different. That is, the gastrointestinal mucosa will be normal and no large area of scattered red lesions in the stomach can be seen. This is the joint research outcome achieved by China Japan Friendship Hospital and CUN Hospital. Seeing this, we know how to protect the GI and how to protect the mucosa. Leaving the topic of disease treatment behind, protecting your stomach is the most important thing. You know, this is the root of many problems. Now we can see regenerative restoration science can regenerate and restore the GI. This is a radioactive gastric ulcer that cannot be cured by any other methods, but we can cure it. Even if complicated with gastro cancerization, this disease can be regeneratively restored after one month's treatment. For example, this patient is a government minister who had terminal pancreatic cancer at that time. Few treatments could be thought of by doctor's panels. Then they thought of me. That was in 2002 when I just declared my regenerative science. They wanted to test out my skills and my new regenerative science, so they invited me to have a consultation. You know, the patient had given up on any medical treatment. The central government had even written a eulogy for him. What kind of situation is that? Then I said I could make his gastrointestinal mucosa regenerate. 